Hi everyone, my name is Dom and I've been a professional developer for more than 10 years. Vibe code is rising and I want to provide my advice on how to build apps. Because coding is so massive and complex that you can easily make a mess without being aware of it. It already happened, went viral on Twitter, people were stealing users data, credit card details, API keys. So I want to share some advice on how to prevent it. But first I want to define Vibe coders because it's quite new. Vibe coders are non-developers who are building apps with AI without actually understanding the code, which is different from professional developers using AI because they understand the code or at least they should partially understand the code at least. All this is absolutely amazing because we can now make apps with natural language, not only with code anymore, which is a great power, but with great power comes responsibility. As I said, coding is so complex that it's super easy to forget something. Let's take a look at the example of this house, which represents a Vibe coded app, everything perfect from the front, but if you look at the back, it's just about to collapse because it's on the hill and it only has one stall. It's pretty obvious that this house is bad, but in coding it's not really that obvious. Your app can look perfect, but you can have massive, massive security vulnerabilities. So let's go with advice number one. When you do backend, don't do it from scratch. Use a tool like Superbase or Firebase. And Superbase and Firebase are not just for Vibe coders. Many startups are using it, even bigger companies, just because they simplify the backend process a lot, yet they are extremely, extremely powerful. You can mess something up in coding everywhere, but especially in the backend, you can leak your data easily there. You can make it really unsecure and there is no need for you to write authentication alone, to write all those basic operations where you store things to the database, when you retrieve from the database, when you delete, when you filter things, it's not needed. Use those tools because they already have security measures out of the box and they will remind you to follow them. There are still things you need to do, but you can also watch them on YouTube. For example, I prefer Superbase. There are things like RLS. Just watch a video about RLS on YouTube and you will learn more about it. Then go and watch some other topics like Superbase security recommendations, Firebase security practices. There are so many great videos and articles about it. If you don't feel like watching a video, just drop into a tool like Second Brain and chat with the video and tell the tool that it summarizes you the video, then ask sub questions just so that you can learn faster. Number two, after you coded something, ask AI about security vulnerabilities. Because sometimes AI will not do that, especially when you just prompt it and prompt it and prompt it and keep prompting, I want to do this, but this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, then you'll just get some solution. But before, you actually make that code final, ask AI to review it for you, to tell you some potential security vulnerabilities, ask a prompt like, let's say this is a production app, is this code good? Are there any improvements, especially about security? Just add that to your workflow that after you finished a certain piece of task or a task itself, ask AI if there are any improvements or like any massive security vulnerabilities there. Three, ask somebody to occasionally review your code. Ideally, you maybe have a developer friend who can help you with it and they will be able to spot something if something is really critical. Maybe an option is if you don't have a developer friend to hire somebody as a consultant to help you with your code. That of course depends on the budget. So ideally you have a friend who can help you. If not, you hire someone. But the third option is always, well, the advice number two, ask AI about your code. Sometimes the fixes can be really fast. Let's say that you put your API keys on the client side in the front end app. API keys should be hidden, but if you do it like that, they will be visible in the browser. So technically, Everyone can copy those API keys and just use your account and make you massive bills. If you ask AI or if you ask a developer friend, they will immediately tell you, okay, put that to secrets, put that to the server, it should be hidden. That's why with just a tiny amount of work, 
you can actually make massive, massive security improvements, or better to say, remove massive vulnerabilities. Four, testing. When your feature is done, you should test it. You should test that exact same flow, but not only you, you should set up automated testing. There are tools like Cypress or Playwright or similar, where you can literally write a script that does exactly what you would do as a user. For example, let's say that you have a feature where you have an AI visual board and then you add these different elements to the chat context and you chat with them and you can write exactly the same script for that flow. And then every time before you deploy, before you make your new changes public for your users, those automated tests run automatically. If they fail, that means that something is wrong, you broke something, which is perfectly fine, we break things all the time, but then you just fix it. And by doing that, you are certain, if your tests of core are good, that you will not ship broken code and broken apps to your users. But testing is not just for that, it gives you a different perspective because as a tester you use app differently when you code it and when you see it from that different perspective you can fix some massive flaws that otherwise you might miss. 5. CICD. It stands for continuous integration, continuous delivery and it's kind of like continuation to that automated testing. Let me give you an example. There is one app that your users see coming from one code base and then every time when you do some changes before your users actually see it, those automated tests will run. If something fails, then the users will not see that updated version of the app. First, you will need to fix the tests. First, you will need to fix the code. And then after you're done, CICD will run again, pass, and only then the app will be deployed. Only then the users will see the new app. For CICD, I recommend GitHub Actions. You have those YAML files where you define them. I would highly suggest watching a couple of videos about GitHub Actions and YAMLs, or as I said, dropping into Second Brain and chatting with them, and then implementing some simple strategy with it. And number six, Git and GitHub. I already mentioned GitHub. There is a difference between them. So GitHub is kind of like cloud for code, Google Drive for code with obviously a lot of features made for developers and for the code and all of your code is stored there and from there the code is fetched and deployed to and then distributed to end users but also to your test servers and so on and so forth. Git on the other side is a version control system that it's here more to track changes that you do in your code base because let's say you're just putting all of your code on one place without any version control, without GitHub or anything. You're just coding and coding and coding. And then you do something and you make a mess. And you don't really know when or how did you make some mess because everything is just like in one place. Git kinda allows you to have checkpoints. You know in a game when you, I don't know, you have a level and you have like 10 sub-levels inside and then you pass a certain point and if you die, you always return to that point. That's kind of like Git. You have one feature, you do it, you commit it, and then you start something new. And if you screw something up, you can always return to that point. And that's the purpose of Git. Because sometimes you might potentially see two months later that you made some mess there. Because, but, be, but because of Git and because you track all the history and do things bit by bit, you will be able to know Ah, okay, two months ago I did that and that caused the problem. Git also allows you to have branches and it's perfect with automated testing and CI-CD. Let's have one more example. So you have your app that end users see and that's usually on the main branch. But then when you do your changes, you don't want to code directly in the main branch because if you make some mess, then users will see that mess immediately. So you have a copy of that code base, which is called, let's say, feature, visual board, you implement your visual board and then before you make it available for all of your other users, you run tests. And then you merge those changes into the main 
after you're certain that the code is nice and that it does exactly what you want. But it doesn't really matter what you do on your feature branch because nobody really sees it except you. So whatever you do, however you manipulate the code base, destroy it, it absolutely does not matter because worst case scenario, you can just drop this branch. But it's important that you don't do it on main branch because then if you mess something, users will see it. I hope that this was useful. Thanks for watching. I could obviously talk way more right now, but I believe these six advices are really powerful and you should investigate them more. You should read articles about them. You should watch videos about them. Like, subscribe. If you don't want to watch those videos, drop them to Second Brain and chat with videos so that, well, AI actually explains the videos and implements them better to your code base. And yeah, see you in the next video. Cheers.